All right, guys, today we're coming at you from Greece's largest island, Crete. More specifically, we're staying in Crete's second largest town, Hanya. It's truly one of my favorite places, and it makes a great base for day trips. But we're only here for two days, so it's not really much of a vacation. What is it much of then? Well, I can't be telling you any of that. But it's something really special that we've been putting together for a long time. I'm really nervous, to be honest with you. Link in the description if it's up, and if it's not, hey, maybe consider giving us a sub and a bell so you don't miss it. Never mind that now, though. While we're here, I've managed to carve out just a little time to show you my absolute favorite day trip back from when I lived here. We'll be exploring the three great monasteries of the Akriti Hills. Yeah, it's only about 20 kilometers outside of our base in Old Tan Hanya, and like two kilometers outside the airport. It's so close and so convenient, you could do this, or at least parts of it, on your way back home, going to the airport. First things first though, guys, how are we gonna get there? So you absolutely need a car for this excursion. These monasteries are really remote and not connected at all by public transportation. And that's why I've taken a quick pit stop here in the Hanya Covered Market. It's a great place to pick up some snacks and drinks some souvenirs and all the stuff you're gonna need before we get back in the car. We rented a car at the airport for the entire three days that we're gonna end up being here. So we've already got one. However, it's also really easy to rent one the day of in Old Town Hanya. There's a street just not too far from here. I've linked a map in the description below with some reputable companies that I've used before. Pro tip, Greece requires an international driver's license to rent cars to foreigners. Some places will rent to you without one, but you really don't want their cars. Trust me on that. Not to worry though, the international driver's license isn't difficult to get at all. It's more of a translation document than a license, to be honest with you. And if you're much of a traveler, then you must have one of these things. We got ours from AAA the same day our flight left the United States. It cost about $30 and only took 20 minutes of our time to get. Not having one of these in my flight bag has bitten me on the ass before, so go and get one and just like keep it with you. With all of that taken care of and snacks in hand, we've got a 30 minute drive to the first monastery. Let's go. Okay, we're here at our first monastery, Aya Triada. Now, I do want to point out the tour bus size parking lot in front of a nicely preserved monastery. You see, this monastery is rather popular for tourists and it's equipped to match. And why wouldn't it be popular? With beautiful architecture, regular church services, bathrooms, vineyard, a vineyard shop with a great stock of wines, olive oils, and vinaigrettes, and most importantly, plenty of cats. This thing is a total 10 out of 10. Now, I say all this because Aya Triada is the first and most accessible of the three. In fact, I kind of like to think of this trio as a traffic light of travel challenges. The monastery start out pretty easy and progress in traveler skill level. As you can guess, this one's going to be our green light, but we'll talk more about that later as we get going. First, let's get to know Aya Triada. All right, now that we're all done with Aya Triada, there's a quick sidebar before we get on the road. 
The next monastery we'll be heading to is Governetto. Referencing the earlier traffic light metaphor, this is gonna be our yellow. So it's gonna require just a little bit more from us to access it, as you'll need to be able to take your car for very narrow, decently paved, but incredibly thin, windy mountain road. Getting to Governetto is only possible on foot, so we'll take the car as far as we can to a somewhat more impromptu parking lot than this one and then get walking. It's a little bit uphill, but it's clearly marked and clearly paved, so you won't have any worries there. So if you've never done that before, you know, be prepared. As you'll see, we're heading out of civilization and into the hills themselves. We might end up in a little bit of trouble, honestly, if we say ran out of gas or, you know, got into a bit of an accident. So just be really careful. I'm not meaning to scare anybody, as I think you'll be more than fine. It's just worth noting that preparation is key. Lastly, I actually add it as probably the nicest bathroom you're gonna have access to for a little while. So, you know, give that a thought before you get in the car. Sorry for the delay. Let's all get back on track. One more thing that I do want to mention is that, as you can tell, the weather seems to be turning kind of sour on us. Since we're on a limited schedule, I'm going to go up there and shoot, but I can't promise you that I'm going to be able to do any more audio on location. The wind is picking up. We'll see what happens. And for those who are interested in how the road is actually going to be if you bet on the fence, how about I show you? Here, yeah. this should give you a good angle. All right, I told you that wasn't so bad. Speaking about the drive up here, obviously not the weather, which seems like it's taking a little bit of a turn for the worse, but no worries. About this monastery then. The St. John Governetto Monastery was built in 1537. It's in the architectural style of a Venetian fortress with towers and Baroque accents. It looks pretty cool. This is one of the oldest monasteries in Crete as well, and at one time held about 60 monks, which made it one of the biggest. At the moment, you'd call this monastery semi-functional. It's under restoration, and as such, the monks can be quite strict, often banning photography. I'll try my best to get some good footage, but maybe you'll just have to come here and see it for yourself. Before we go and explore it though, if you continue walking along the same path that we just walked up, instead of turning into the monastery itself, you'll come across a gate. Meet me over there when you're done. Don't forget to close the door behind you, just to keep the goats out. Now that we're through the gate, let's go check out the trailhead. All right, first off, do apologize if it's a little bit windy. As you can see, I'm literally inside a cloud and it's passing by pretty quickly. Hopefully it's not too bothersome. So you've seen the green, you've seen the yellow, you guys ready to hear about the red? Behind me is a hiking path. And if you go down it, you're gonna come across our third monastery, Catholico. I've gone there quite a few times now and it's just never gotten old. In fact, it's so incredible. I'm not gonna tell you any more about it until we get there. I will, however, discuss the hike itself because I do think you need to know what you're getting into. It descends all the way down into a gorge and eventually out to the sea. But remember, every step down is a step up you're gonna have to take later on. It's probably only about 25 odd minutes there and 35 back since it's uphill. It's really not that bad. However, do wear appropriate clothing. This is not something you wanna tackle in jeans. It's not exactly on flat terrain. On the way are some spectacular views and about halfway there is the cave of the she-bear, a naturally occurring cave that in its center has a stalagmite that apparently looks like a bear. The cave also shows evidence of Artemis and Apollo cult worship, so that's pretty cool. And I could believe it too because it's really spooky in there. And now you know what you're getting into, I'll show you why it's worth it and why I'm braving the elements. So let's have some fun history facts. This monastery was founded in the 11th century and is considered the oldest monastery in Crete. It was founded by Saint John the Hermit who lived in isolation among the many caves in this gorge. Upon his death in 1027, the cave he inhabited was converted into a temple and more monks came here to live in his image. The monastery flourished until the 16th century, but the 17th century wasn't so kind. Pirates constantly raided the coast and eventually forced the monks to relocate in 1632. The Orthodox Church later declared John the Hermit a saint and added many of the structures that we see today around the caves. Well, I hope you like it.
Hey everybody, we're back in Munich. We recently got back from Greece and we're going to be talking about the monasteries. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite day trips we've ever done, so I'm really excited to get started talking about it. What were your initial impressions? Uh, I mean, the same as yours. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. This is one of my favorite things that we did during our time on Crete. And kind of the weird thing and why I wanted to make this video is because I couldn't find much info, well, you couldn't find much information mm -hmm. online about it at all. And so we really weren't that excited to go. Uh, Crete has tons of resources for tourists to help you find out what you want to do and get you to those beaches and the gorges and all those sites. And so the fact that there was no information, or at least very little, about how to string them all together, it made me kind of feel like it wasn't going to be that good. Mm. But I'm glad you convinced me to do it because it ended up being one of our favorites. And that's the point of the video is I wanted to show you all those steps to put it all together so that you could figure out if you could do it too. And I really hope you can because actually I think it's easier to execute than some of the more touristy things. I mean, like even Samaria Gorge, I think is a little bit more complicated than this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love it. Um, to actually give it even more context, I'm the kind of guy who will annoyingly show you all of his travel photos. And when it comes to my time in Crete, I show this almost immediately. Before my favorite restaurant, before all the beaches, I show people the fact that we went to this and tell them all about it and try to convince them to go. So hopefully I've convinced you to go a little bit. Yeah. And what's your recommendation and thought about the whole thing? Um, I would recommend this for people who feel comfortable driving in Greece. That's true. Other than that, I think this is very doable for most people. You saw the video, you saw what you'll be comfortable with. Um, but you need an international driver's license and you need to feel comfortable driving on slightly less maintained roads than what you might be used to. The drivers are also a little bit more aggressive than what a lot of people are mm -hmm. uh, used to. So you need to be a little bit more defensive, a little bit more aware. Right. But other than that, it's very doable. Not right. reachable by public transportation. So again, you do need to have to rent a car and drive. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could book a tour, I think, to Aya Chiara, oh, but then you're going to miss out on, mm -hmm. on everything else. But if that's what you want to do, you know. Yeah, exactly. That, no shame in doing that. Right. If you just want to pick up some great olive oil, that's a good place <laughs> to do it. Yeah. So with that being said, we are a brand new channel. So it really, really helps if you can like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Yeah, completely. Anything you can do to let us know, get some feedback, and tell us what you think. And check out our other videos. We've got a few. Uh, one more in Greece, and we've got a few more in Bavaria. So hopefully you'll like those. And hit us up in the comments as well. I'd be more than happy to answer whatever questions you might have, perhaps about the international driver's license or anything like that. And uh, yeah, I guess that does it, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.